This is Forza Horizon 5. We're doing a tips and tricks going over key details about the game and generally telling you the gist of how to play it and other elements that can give you a bit of an edge as you explore the vast open world of Mexico that has been emulated in Forza Horizon 5. So we'll be focusing on a console perspective on this one in regards to the details we give out, just in case you are wondering. So, you know, most racing games are pretty similar in regards to how you drive around, so we don't need to talk about that kind of stuff. But we'll be going over some of the smaller things that can give you an edge. So if you're playing by yourself, a very cool thing you can do is rewind. So you press the Y button, and that allows you to rewind to a certain degree in case you mess up, you know, do something like a bad turn. Or maybe you, like, mess up and slam off the side of this area. You can press Y to rewind and get yourself back on track in single-player scenarios. So that's kind of a cool feature that they've included here. And it can also really help you with adjusting your speed in case, hey, you're going a little too fast to a corner. You can use that to change things, which is pretty cool. Another option is, hey, you know you don't like the default viewing angle? You're very easily able to press RB, and you can change it through multiple different choices. You want to be in first person, you want to be even more intense on the road, you want to be like literally even closer to the road, or perhaps all the way on the road. The choice is completely up to you, and you can switch, again, easily using RB at any point in order to do so, which is pretty cool. So yeah, the game offers a lot of different ways to connect and play with others. There is now the link button. So you can go left on the D-pad and you can connect with other people or say different things. If you want to go somewhere, you can press down on the D-pad and Anna will give you some sort of specific direction on where you're going to head, which is pretty cool. So yeah, lots of different things you can do and lots of different vehicles you can have. Another neat feature that you can do with this one is, you know what, this car, it's cool, but, you know, I kind of want to use the Apollo. So you can get into the car and have it delivered to you and change the vehicle basically almost instantly, which is pretty cool. And you can just continue on driving as though, yeah, nothing kind of happened, right? Pretty nice vehicle. Pretty shiny. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, totally is. So great. Let's continue along here. Now, the world of Horizon is beautiful. And you can capture that beauty by clicking up on the D-pad in order to open up a camera mode where you can change lots of visual elements. We're not going to dive in depth with that, but it's something I just wanted to mention briefly so that you, you know, know what the mode is and everything like that. So that's pretty cool as well. So you can also use uh, right on the D-pad to change your radio station if you want to go and listen to some different tunes. I have all that off, obviously, music-wise, because, you know, copyright and everything like that is a, is a big issue. But yeah, the game is all about exploration, and you can explore it however you want. There's tons of different activities and different things for you to do. So this is the map. You do it with, uh, well, basically, I guess you would say select or the back button, and it'll open up your map, and it'll give you choices. So you get a number of things. Let's say, I don't know, we want to go here. So you can press A to highlight it. You can press X to fast travel to it. Now it costs 8,400 credits, as you can tell for me to be able to fast travel to that point, which, you know, it's kind of costly over time. So you can alternatively buy this house here, which I think is like 2 million credits, and that will allow you to fast travel to any road at any point, which is cool. But that's the first step. You're like, oh, well, you're talking about it costing money. The second step is if you smash the fast travel boards across the map, I'm trying to find out where a fast travel board icon is, a fast travel board, uh, eventually you'll be able to travel for free. So that's kind of a cool thing if you want to get going there and you don't want it to cost anything if you want to quickly travel to places. But you can travel to all kinds of locations, uh, like little icons and stuff. And like I mentioned, you can travel like any road if you get that specific house. And I think that's a huge offering and an upgrade. So another thing is the game is split into multiple different tiers and different types of races. So we've got like tour events, we've got cross country, we've got you know, trail stuff. You get to pick and choose what you want, and as you complete them, you get more. You can use RB to filter out what you want in regards to the different events, and there's also these passive multiplayer events that are going on, too. Uh, if you're wondering about the circles, those are barn finds. But yeah, you got, like, the Eliminator. You might see a giant... I was kind of hoping it would pop up on the map, a giant circle that's, like, a multiplayer quick time event. So that's, like, a an event that's just happening throughout that certain time that you can jump in and you can start playing, which is pretty cool. So another thing is pressing the start button and opening up the Horizon Festival adventure. So here's where you upgrade your different uh, adventures. So it's like, okay, at the beginning you've got the main stage, but then you get to choose. It's like, okay, I want to do Baja, I want to do Rush. And you can do that, and every time you unlock a new tier, 
you can upgrade that event with other little smaller events for you to take part in, which is pretty cool, at least I think so. And that's kind of the system of upgrading is improving all of these events over time, which is pretty nice. There's also a lot of different ses like settings in regards to your difficulty, in regards to how much the vehicle kind of caters to you, the accessibility options, and also your HUD and gameplay, which is kind of cool. I personally suggest playing on performance mode, which is a 4K60, instead of the fidelity mode, which is 4K30 or, you know, the quality mode. The game will restart if you change to that as well, so keep that in mind. And then there's more advanced controls as well if you want to you know kind of do that stuff so that's kind of cool it's just something i wanted to mention there uh, if you're kind of curious accolades are really important they're how you unlock lots of new little cool items and cars and stuff so every time you get accolades unlocked jump in there and grab yourself maybe a free vehicle a free icon something for your character it's pretty cool and it just gets added to your adventure then there's the festival playlist which kind of goes over the different seasons and everything that's at play again changing your car seeing your car collection this is another way you can unlock cars you get you know, certain cars collected and you get prize unlocks, which is kind of cool. Then there's the car mastery. So as you do skill points, you do tricks, you unlock new things to improve your car. So this menu is something that you need to upgrade over time as you get the new wheel points, and that's kind of cool. And there's car horns, uh, you can tune your car, obviously. Uh, there's also the wheel spins and the super wheel spins. This is how you quickly unlock things, such as new vehicles, get early and quick uh, cash and whatnot. If you're on the PC, there's this thing called Forza Hub you can download uh, that basically allows you to get points across all your different Forza games, which is kind of cool. And I would also suggest checking out occasionally the Message Center because you might get like daily payouts, gifts, drop-offs based on what you've been creating. And speaking of creativity, the Event Lab is a big thing here where you can play what other people have created or create your own events. And it's kind of cool as you change these different options. And people, like, you could go out and you could play Sky Captain 5 Presents WOA, depending on whatever it is. Or you can find events online that other people have created. Or make your own. It's pretty cool. You can change modes. You can change car stuff. It's crazy. There's also different vinyl groups and libraries you can download. In regards to changing, like, the look of your car that people have created, you can make your own. There's the photo mode, which you mentioned, and a drone mode if you want to get an overhead view of everything that's going on. And then there's the store where they've got the car pass and everything like that. So you might find that that is helpful. So I think we should probably get into a, a race here. Oh, a danger sign. That's not what I wanted to do. There we go. I wanted to en enter, enter this event. So we've got different options. There's co-op, there's PvP against others, you could do rivals, you can create your own route from this location. Or you could do a solo race against the Dravatars, which is what we're doing. So again, we've got, you know, kind of the standard event. We've got our create our own event. Or we've got the one where we can browse events and everything like that that people have put together. So we're just going to do the regular event because I want to show off a race scenario. And we're going to throw on... I'm trying to show off different cars and stuff because I always love doing that when these games just come out. We'll, we'll throw on this one because, you know, it's whatever cross-country. And this is where we talk about the different elements of doing actual races while you are doing this thing. And again, I'm hoping you're finding this to be somewhat helpful, or at least, you know, kind of discuss the overall game for you and talk about things. So when we're going on to an actual race, you can tune things, change the starting grid, adjust the difficulty. All that stuff's present right here from the beginning before you even start. So let's get racing here, and let's begin our first uh, kind of competition against other people. So again, you can race in any perspective you want. I find that it's the AI always seems to get like a big jump on me. But again, if you're ever having issues, Y button to rewind, like I had mentioned prior. Very helpful. There's also the option is, hey, you know, I've messed up. I can't really make a comeback. You press the start button, restart event. You can also quit to free roam at any time as well, if you'd like to do that. Now, the cool thing about Horizon is that it's very open, right? You're wanting to probably do clean racing, so you get extra points. But the game does let you cheat on the flags a fair bit, but sometimes not too much, as you just saw me mess up there. But Okay, we're going to rewind a little bit further, but if you hit it just perfectly, you can actually kind of cheat the flags to a degree. So you'll see, see here, I'm kind of like clipping the flag. It's totally cool. There's even a little bit of margin of error outside of the actual flag itself. And again, that depends on which flag you're kind of going after. That was funny. It will depend on what kind of checkpoint you actually hit while you're racing. I've actually never, I don't think I've ever landed on someone in a Forza game. I, I just, like, sorry, that was just really random. I've, I've never done that before. But yeah, like I was saying, sometimes you can really kind of cheat those flags, and it's something I just thought I would mention, because I know some people would be like, oh, you know, you got to play right within the lines, but you see right there, you kind of don't. 
So that could give you an advantage on taking turns or kind of getting around and beating other people to the top of the race, which is kind of cool, right? I don't worry about, you know, placing lower. It's not really a big deal in this one. But if you want to be first, you know, definitely use the rewinds to their full potential. Uh, look at the difficulties of the game as well. Pick something that makes you feel comfortable when you're racing. And like I said, there's lots of different events within, you know, Horizon 5. There's like intense street racing, there's like more circuit type things, there's the open road, there's the cross country, there's dirt stuff. You know, they give you all of these different options to kind of race however you want. And these Drivatars are kind of representations of people that you likely know that have played Forza, like your friends list and whatnot. And it basically takes their style of racing and it has them compete against you. And again, that's part of the, the payouts and stuff you usually get is how like in when your drive guitar shows up in other matches, which is kind of cool. So you can play cleanly as you like if you want, or you could be more aggressive and you can like push into people and stuff. It really is about playing Horizon your way, which is pretty cool. And keep in mind that different types of areas are going to change how your car basically kind of drives around. So if your vehicle is basically, you know, kind of off-road, it's going to be impacted differently by driving you know, somewhere on a pristine road, right? It's going to impact how you move around and how you interact with the world around you. So you have to keep that in mind, and the different type of car will impact that too. So like I was saying, you basically have to be smart about what type of material you're driving on. Obviously, a, your fancy Lamborghini isn't necessarily going to handle the best on, like, you know, sand, or, say, really intense dirt, or also, I don't know, volcanic areas. <laughs> I mean, you can, like, tune and adjust things, obviously. You know, use your own discretion there, but y you know what I mean? Picking the right vehicle for the right job is kind of a smart thing if you want to get uh, an advantage over stuff, which I think is a big deal. So anyways, as you're going around the world, I as I've mentioned, there are a lot of things that you can collect, you can gather, and you can do. So that was kind of like a drift zone there. You saw there's like a stunt thing. And if you don't see most of these right off the bat, you'll very likely come across some as you continue to explore and discover. We're like this XP sign that I'm trying to come across, which I'm assuming is like underground. Another, another thing I wanted to mention is that this game is a lot more destruction oriented than previous Horizon games. You can smash chairs, you can smash, you know, umbrellas. You can even push a lot of objects that in the past would kind of just stop you. You can have some hilarity with it, I guess, if you want to set up photos. But if you're doing races and you're kind of worried, you know, kind of get used to what breaks and what doesn't. Because again, not everything does actually smash. You could break a lot of things, but you can't break everything. Some of it will stop your progress. And with that, some of it will stop your progress if you don't have enough momentum. That can be a thing too. You might hit like a steel thing and be like, oh, I thought I could go through that, but then you go back and you go forward and you have a little bit more momentum, you actually can. The thicker trees you can't seem to ever hit or knock down, but there's a number of different tree styles that you actually can just smash and, you know, destroy in this one, which is kind of cool. And that's just being kind of smart with understanding, hey, what you can get away with in regards to damaging things and going by it without getting your progress halted as you're going around. Now, if you're trying to rack up some crazy points, once again, the best thing you can do in a Horizon game is to just find a long stretch of road. So there are a few of these across the map. There's these big... I guess you could say runways, airstrips, places like that. Actually, this place is pretty good, the dome. It's just a big circle. You can just do loops and stuff if you need to. But I'm trying to find it. Sorry, there's like so much clutter on my map. It is ridiculous. There's one down here. So it's like a big airstrip you can do where it's just a big, long stretch of road. Same with uh, the major artery highway. You can just like whip down that. It's relatively straight. You don't run into issues. There's also one at the first Horizon Festival area that you head to because it's just like this long airstrip area that I'm trying to actually... Okay, let, let me just like do this and then do the festival sites. There we go. So it's kind of right there. You can see that big airstrip line there. So what's really cool about that is you can do the typical thing where I'm sure people that have played past Horizon games know what I'm talking about is to rack up points, you just kind of drive straight, and then you do like really slight drifts back and forth as you continue to kind of get momentum going on. 
and that will allow you to kind of keep a good pivot thing going on. I don't know if this car is really fast enough for it. But yeah, you can kind of get an e-drift going on, and you can just kind of drift back and forth, back and forth, ever so slightly, to keep up your momentum, and you can get this huge kind of score thing going. And keep in mind that unless you have the point system on your car that allows you to go through two hits before you have an issue, make sure you do stop and actually rally up your points, as if I hit something that I can't go through, I will lose my kind of score streak going on, because you want to get that in order to get the points to kind of like pump up your car's RPG quote-unquote stats. Another great way to do things is just to kind of smash into stuff, do big jumps. If you're driving along the open desert area like I am here, like this Outback spot, you can basically just keep like smashing things, uh, scoring points and whatnot, doing big jumps, you know, things like that that kind of keep up your point system, which is kind of neat. You know, the big sand dunes that give you nice little jumps here and there. And that's just how you get your points, how you level, how you get the points, for, like the RPG quote-unquote points for your car. It, it's very, very simple in regards to getting those like big chains up for points and stuff. Kind of neat, right? That was a speed trap. I wish I would have known that wasn't even on the map. Huh. But yeah, rocks, not a good thing. They kind of bop you down. Not a lot of fun. Usually your car will, you know, you'll get put back on. Sometimes you got to do a rewind depending on how you land. I've been stuck on some rock spots. It happens, you know. It's just part of the territory of going off-road, which is kind of also exciting in itself. But yeah, this is a really big, beautiful game that offers a lot of different things for you to do. I hope I've been kind of going over a lot of details that will help improve your journey as you soar across the open world horizon. And there's 11 different biomes, so there's all kinds of different things you can do. You want to do huge jumps off a massive place, climb to the top of this volcano. It looks flat here, but trust me, this is the highest point in the game. Want to do some more like river or go across a, like a track, like a, a rail track. You know, that's up here at the top. Want to go through a city town? That's right here. We'll turn on all the icons and stuff. Want to go along the beach? We've got a beach here. we got a beach on the other side, you know. Nice little dunes, more of a sandy area here. Then this is more like regular kind of, you know, outback kind of stuff. And then you get some crop areas, a stadium thing. Down here, it's like more foresty. You see some ruins. You see some temple things. There's just a lot for you to do and a lot for you to enjoy as you continue to explore, improve your horizon, and enjoy, you know, what this game has to offer. There's so many different cars you can buy, different things you can do to customize your vehicles and have a great time with. It really is quite expansive. And even if you're just like traveling and exploring, you're going to come across so many unique locations, so many unique challenges, that it feels basically endless in regards to the amount of activities that you can take part in. And I hope that, you know, while I didn't necessarily entirely focus on the racing elements, I hope I've given you enough context in regards to, like, you know, exploring this world, getting the hang of things. I think the driving, for most people, is probably going to come, you know, pretty naturally in regards to just playing other racing games. You know how to do the gas, you know how to do, like, drifting and stuff like that. And it's mostly about the smaller adjustments here or there that can really fine-tune and improve your experience in, in many, many unique ways. And in general, I hope that was kind of something where maybe you learned a little bit about the game, figure out a different area or aspect of, like, you know, kind of integrating with things. I guess if you didn't know about the moving side to side, you can use the right stick, so you can go to the right, it'll show you that side, go to the left, it'll show you that side. You can just kind of hold it down and it'll let you like switch back and forth or you can click down and it'll show you behind you so that's kind of a cool thing i guess if you're not using your mirrors and whatnot that might be something that you find to be pretty helpful uh viewing angle wise it's not something i use a lot because i'm usually just looking forward but you know that's something that you might find neat yeah and don't forget drifting a drifting x drifting well not b <laughs> Anyways, I hope you found this helpful and it covered your adventures out there on the horizon. Find some cool things, have some great times, drop a like on the video, you know how that is. Subscribing, I heard, is pretty rewarding. But, <laughs> yeah, good luck out there dominating the roads, having a fun time driving about, and exploring the vast horizons of Volta Horizon 5 in Mexico.